Hello everybody, my name is Virgin Raptor and I welcome you to your new World of Tanks preview video. Today we'll have the first tier 8 premium tank destroyer of the American Tech Tree. And by gosh, I absolutely adore how this tank looks like. Like, <laughs> I don't know... It if people know what a hawk nose is, those those weird looking snakes with their little snoot which goes upwards or snout, it's uh, you, either you hate them or you love them, and I think it's the same with this tank. I just adore how it looks. It looks so weird and so wonky, but I love it. I do want to make this preview dose subjective. Uh, no, now I said wrong. Objective and try to keep my subjective side a little bit aside. And yes, I do did said in my worst to best video that I I personally didn't meant to I, I wanted to say subjective meaning my personal opinion and not objective. Thanks for the guys which pointed it out. I'm learning every day, and as I already said, English is not my mother language. It's the good language of Swiss cheese and chocolate. Anywho, without further ado, I guess we'll have a look at what Wargaming is going to talk about in this tank. Today, a premium tier 8 US tank destroyer makes its debut in closed testing. It, this is a well-protected machine designed for close quarters combat, and we mean it, it's very, very well protected. The frontal armor of the hull hits 260mm, the weapon is fast firing and hard hitting, the DPM is more than 2800 hit points with a single shot damage of 400 HP and basic shell penetration of 248 millimeters. As for the mobility, it's a norm for heavy machines with a max of speed of 26 kilometers per hour. So first of all, we already get a lot of inf interesting information. It's more than 2800 DPM, putting it, I think, at the highest DPM or one of the highest DPMs on tier 8 tank destroyers. I'm not entirely sure, I'm pretty sure that something like the AT-15 can top that. It might be on par with the AT-15 and something like, no, the Jack Tiger has just a lot more, yeah, 2,900. And maybe the normal Kanoniak Panzer, never mind, what? wait, what? Oh, it actually has that bad of a DPM, whoops. Uh, I got confused, I was thinking like, yeah, the normal Jack Panzer, even though I free marked that tank, I thought it had a good DPM. Never mind. The other one, which is probably going to skyrocket, is the WZ 121 GFT. But the TS has, it looks like, compared to most of those TDs, the best DPM, except for, as already said, the AT15, which shines with two with 1870 almost 2900 and obviously the 8.8 .8 centimeter pack 43 jack tiger which almost gets 2950 which is a humongous dpm i can tell you this tank does a lot of fun when you know how to play it and get actually decent matchmaking <laughs> so next up is the pre Precision and speed of the shells do limit effectiveness of the, T of the TS-5 over long distances, but it's not terrible, and if needed, this American can get up close to deal with opponents. After all, this is a hard-shelled tank destroyer, which will feel right at home in defending a line of attack during the battle. It can also help bring out those entrenched enemies from their safe positions. Moreover, it can shake off shells from higher-tiered opponents when played effectively especially if you can hide the lower frontal plate, which is its biggest weak spot. And no kidding, look at that huge lower plate. I already saw some comment comments on Reddit, on the Armor Patrol, on the Daily Bounce, where people were like, oh yeah, look at that, it's a better T28. Get the fuck out, Wargaming. You are just going to uh, make it OP and make the T28 obsolete with bad crew layout, etc., etc., and no real weak spots. I do have to say, right now, we do not have any armor model showing us how thick the armor is so we have to hold our horses and wait my guess could be that either the whole lower plate will be around 100 millimeters thick or maybe they decide to segment it a little bit making like the upper lower plate 127 millimeters thick which is what something like the t28 has i just have to find the paper or the page here we go, 127 millimeters, and when the T28 is looking at you frontally, it is still very well angled, which could be the same for this tank, and maybe the lower parts being around 100 millimeters. It really depends. I would like if Wargaming would do that approach, because it would 
not only save you a little bit if you're not fully cooled down, because with 5 degrees of gun depression, this could be a problem, but it would also give you... Um, give you a weaker weak spot, if you want to call it like that, for lower tiered opponents to actually punch through when they get up close and personal. So, next up, in summary, the TS-5 is a hard shell, but a slightly sluggish, ar sluggish armored vehicle with a quick firing, hard hitting armament, perfect for getting up and close and brawling. As always, depending on the test results, the characteristics may change. Follow the news and good luck in your battles. Thank you very much, Wargaming, I definitely need it. So, let's have a look at the stats of this behemoth and compare to the T-28, because let's be honest, it is a T-28. What I've heard so far, it has the exactly same crew layout as the T-28. And do, I, I do have to say, Wargaming, if you want to sell TS-5s, please give it a second loader so it's a viable crew trainer for the T110E3 and the T110E4, the top dogs, because the T28 concept is not really a good premium tank because it doesn't earn more credits and the M56 Scorpion is not a good crew trainer because it lacks this second loader spot. So again, more gaming. You already did it. You already did it with the ELC. We know that you can squeeze a third or a fifth crew member in that case in a tank. So please consider putting a second load in it so it's actually viable premium and crew trainer for the T110E3 and the T110E5. But now, without further ado, let's compare the stats to the T28. And as already said, those are preliminary stats. They can change. To 1,500 hit points is exactly the same thing as the normal T28 has. 260 armor, however, is a tough nut to crack. You can see the normal T28 has 254, which is already a huge thing. But this one can go up to 260, which I think the gun mantle is already looking pretty big. So... Yes, probably all around here. Probably this part here would be 260 and around here 203. Most likely how it would be here or maybe something a little bit less strong, like 150, 127, something like that. The lower plate, as already said, I do not know what Wargaming is to decide on. I personally would love to see a segmented lower plate like we would see on something like on the E3, making it when you hit the lower parts, making it easier to penetrate by the upper parts are a lot harder, if you get what I mean. So this part would, like something up here would be, I don't know, like 100... 60 millimeters thick and this part down here 127 or even 100 millimeters so you can give the tankers which are actively trying to be hold down but can't really all the time give a little benefit but when they are just completely in the open field that everybody can penetrate it with careful aiming that would be my preferred state next up we do not know if those road wheels over here are counted for damage models i think they won't and we have two examples which this was already the case. Well, you can also see the, the T28, basically. Oops, that's not what I wanted. It also does not pose anything here, and those are not part of the damage model. It's just spaced armor, if you want to say. And I don't think that those parts will be part of the damage model either, but they can. Again, it's not entirely sure. But another tank which could have the same problem, or did have the same problem, is the Object 279 early and the Object 257, which both have those weird parts where it is connected to the hole. So when you go to the visual model, like those parts here, they are not part of the damage model. And same goes for the Object 279 early, all those middle sections part, which are basically drivetrain, are not part of the damage model. So I my guess would be those are no part either. And this would mean that this tank will be not be able to be detracted with damage, frontally at least. When we look at the backs of those two vehicles, zip, this is a whole other story. But I think those road wheels will play pretty similar to the T28. So, next thing. 750 horsepower is slightly less, 30 horsepower less than the T28 has, meaning it has a power to weight ratio of 12.5 and not 13.01. The gun traverse angle speed is 22 degrees per second, which is 4 degrees slower, but it's really not that important or impressive, I think. There's nothing really about it. 
Um, 24 degrees per second hull traverse speed is one degree slower than a T28. It's still really slow, especially for a brawler tank, but in the end you also won't be able to, you've guessed it, circle that tank. Nevertheless, you can also see from the armor model, it also has those heat screens, which the T28 do not pose. And meaning, well, they're additional armor. Um, they can maybe shrug off T54, Optic 416, 430U's use heat, depending on the impact angle, which is... Great news, really great news. So, next up we've got fuel range 370 meters is exactly the same as the T28. I will most likely play the tank with either, or no, I, I'll most likely play it like this. We have Wentz, we have a tank gun rammer and I'm probably going to get Binos. Because of the pure fact that sometimes this is a breakthrough vehicle, at least it looks like it. The TS5 will most likely be a breakthrough vehicle. So, in my thought process, I would say, hey, sometimes you break through, you see you're getting shot at, you stop. Three seconds later, your binos go up, and by then the enemy should be either spotted or with the next shot they will be spotted. You won't be able to snipe them most likely, we are coming to that in just a second, but you are able to spot them. So I think the binos are a pretty valid option for maps of course, you can't choose the map, but in general. Yes, when you're on a map like Himmelsdorf, Ruinburg, or any closest map, Pilsen even, well, then you're a little bit screwed over it, and the banners are not really useful. But overall, I think the banners on most maps has a use in it, like on Prokhorovka, where you want to push down the... Is it the 1-2 line? I think the Camping Forest line. Yes, it's the 1-2 line. And then you can sometimes just stay in a bush, let your binos go up and hope you spot something which is shooting or is close enough to get spotted because of your camo breaking. So yeah, that will be my preferred state. And you can see 472 meters of fuel range is great. You can get with all coded optics to 445 meters or 450 meters of fuel range, but it needs a heavy investment with cola, with brothers in arms and situational awareness. And again, this is a heavy investment in money and in skills, in my personal opinion. I'm going to put these things back out of the tank again, so we have no things which are interfering with our, uh, what's it called, comparison. So, 26 km per hour top speed is 4 km faster. Same goes for the backward speed, which is 2 km faster. And I already heard people saying, well, this might be making this tank OP and makes the T28 obsolete. Once again, the gun might be the problem. Yes, it has better DPM. It's, it reloads to 0.23 seconds faster, which, well, it adds up after some time. And that can even be the difference between perma-tracking an enemy and not perma-tracking an enemy. The problem, though, is, as you can see, is the 0.44 accuracy, which is miles behind the 0.36. To be exact, 0.08 accuracy less and this is a big deal because the i3a has these accuracy values and they are atrocious i know many people love the i3 and think it's overpowered i can't get it done with it i just don't like it at all it's just the gun is too in unreliable in my opinion 1.8 seconds aim time is 0 0.2 faster and as already said the reload time so this was with what will make or break this tank in my personal opinion or make or OP break this tank, like make this tank OP or not and make the T28 obsolete. It's plain simple if this gun actually or this accuracy and the armor is overall better and performs better than a T28. I do think that a T28 which is positioned properly or camping a base and defending the base is, is a menace. Like you do not want to run into that DPM. As you could see, it's one of the highest, plus 400 alpha, meaning it basically two shots every single tier eight, uh, tier six medium. It can one shot tier six TDs when it shoots HE, and the HE is not too shabby either. Like a Hellcat, when it ho ho when it rolls high, it can actually one shot a uh, what's it called a Hellcat. So. That is something you have to look after, and yes, it's it can be strong when it's a top tier tank. And when it's flop tier, yes, the armor won't hold up as good because, well, we have a, a meta where a lot of people just shoot premium rounds anyway. But anyway, but otherwise, the gun is pretty darn strong. Yes, also, it has three millimeters more gold penetration. If it is, it's APCR or heat, we do not know. Most likely, APCR. It is three millimeter more. Oh boy. 
No, 248 millimeters of standard penetration is a great value. Like this is what a T34 has and it pays with a really, really bad DPM for that. So overall, the TS5 definitely will be a strong vehicle so far, in my personal opinion. Five degrees of gun impression, yes, it could be better, it could be worse. Yes, it's the same as the T28, so I say it's 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 equal, it's not a big deal. Ten degrees of gun traverse angles, left and right, both are also okay. It is one degree worse than what the T28 has, once more, not a big difference. It's You can forget about it. I do understand that people are saying at the moment, yeah, why should I grind then the T28 when there is a TS5, basically just a better version of it. And it really depends exactly how well this tank will feel. Like, we already know from the Russian server where the super testers were like, oh, the Optic 268 version 4 is such a bad tank, let's buff it more. And Wargaming did it, but they didn't realize those people were sniping like like Pop-Tarts or Dumb-Tarts or how you want to call it in a semi-violent, uh, mean way. <laughs> this tank, however, it has bad accuracy and wargaming said this is a frontline vehicle this is a brawler and um, the speed which it has those 4 kph more and 2 kph backwards they can make the difference what the t28 can't do so it's it's hard to tell i really look forward to see the armor model and i really look forward to have a spin with this tank myself when it gets into the live server somehow i am looking forward to this vehicle don't get me wrong i never played the old t uh, this t28 in its current state i played the old one which where just everybody should through it um might be even in the game no no sadly not it's not in the game files oh no 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 it is still in the game files yay where you can where you just had this 200 free overall armor which is just atrociously bad compared to what we have now like, what we have now is just... I just have to change it shortly. This beast of armor. 254 and 233 effective lower plate armor. It's, it's a massive. Like, it's great. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to play something similar. And I look forward to this being a brawler tank. But, again, there is a little bit of a bitter taste when I am looking at the whole package, at the whole cake, and trying to get a slice of it. Because again, people can say it is an OP tank and it won't be, and it's just obs making the T28 obsolete. One thing, again, I have to point out, give this tank a second loader. At the moment it is commander, gunner, driver and loader, commander being the radio man as well. It's almost the same like the T120 free and the T120 four has, but again, there is a loader missing. You already put in a third crew member in the ELC even 90, even though there were only two members. And you can clearly see that there are only two members. Like, geez, Wargaming, where, where, where is the, 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 the... Doesn't really make much sense, does it? When you look at the ELC even in the 3D model, see the visual models, and you see two cupolas for the both heads. Like, here we have a head, and here we have a head. So where the hell did you put in the third crew member, which is a gunner, I think? Yes, yeah, a gunner. Doesn't make a lot of sense, does it now? So you can totally give this tank a f fifth load, even though it is not that historical. We strayed far away from historically accurate, let's be honest. Two more things is there are other projects, like uh, you can see the TS5 in this version right here has a bigger cupola. So they could add this to make it a big weak spot, depending how the lower plate is. And there are other TS variants, TS31, which looks weird, TS6, we even have a TS2 and a H3, which looks like a... F this legit looks like a 50B turret slapped onto an M1 Abrams armor plate or uh, hull. It looks so weird and I love it. And this would be the wooden mock-up of this tank. And it looks cool. It really, really looks cool. And you can see that the lower plate is not just a flat thing and it's more rounded towards downward. So there are chances, especially when we look at this drawing here, that these parts down here are less armored than those parts up here, which would be great in my opinion. But yeah, 20 minutes almost gone, I'm me brabbling about one tank which is not yet in the game. Let me know what your thoughts are about this vehicle in the comment section below, I would love to hear it. And yes, I hope I was able to give you an objective view before giving you my subjective opinion. I have to repeat that word so I can finally remember it correctly. And thank you all so much for watching. And well, soon as we can. Thanks. Bye bye.